Hi, my name is Mike Zola from the Avamar Integration Lab. Today we're going to talk about Avamar 5.0 and its integration with vSphere. Being logged into the administrator, we can go ahead and check out what we've added from an administrative point of view and how we actually manage and discover Virtual Center. As you can see here, as I click into my Vir VC instance, and say edit client, I'll very quickly note the username and password that I've given access to to Discover Virtual Center. By doing this, I have the capability to go ahead and add virtual machines. So if I were to go in here and select multiple clients, I have the capability of drilling down inside a virtual center to actually see what I want to actually discover and or protect. I also have the capability here, once I select my virtual machines, is to enable change block tracking, which is again a new feature inside of ESX4 and vSphere 4 technology. Note here you can see that all of the gray machines are machines that have already been added into Avamar. This one here is the only one that, that hasn't been added yet into Avamar. We also have the capability now very quickly to determine how virtual machines are being protected. So by clicking on Virtual Center, I can very quickly see which virtual machines are actually being protected via image, via guest, via both image and guest, or more importantly, not at all. So very quickly, I can sort by the machines that aren't being protected and now, very quickly as an administrator, I have that capability to see what's being protected and what's not. Let's now go ahead and actually kick off a backup. Here I'll click on Policy. I'll drill down into my policies, and I've created one here called Capture, which will do two virtual machines, and I'll say Backup now. Looking at the active tasks, We'll start to see these get queued up, and then we'll also start to see some activity in the back screen with the vSphere client. So looking at the progress of our backups, we can see that we've now backed up two virtual machines, one being 100 gigs, the other being 40 and we've done it in a total of 50 seconds. Now that we've completed our backups, let's go ahead and see what our recovery options are. By choosing my virtual machine and the date in which I want to recover from, I can choose to recover all virtual disks. When I say recover, I have the option to put it back in its original location. Note here you can see where it was during the backup time and where it is currently inside of ESX. You'll also note that I have three different virtual disks here, all in this case residing on the same uh, LUN or data store inside of VMware. When I recover at a place, I have the option to actually go to a different virtual center instance, choose my virtual machine name, in this case I'll just call it new VM and select where I would like that VM to actually reside. Next I'll have the capability to go ahead and drill down and choose which ESX server I would like this virtual machine to be housed on when I first power it on. This also gives me the capabilities to go ahead and drill into which VMDK or data store I would like to actually have on which particular piece of storage. Here I can see all the data store LUNs that the ESX server can see and I can choose which LUN I would like my virtual machine to reside on. It'll give me a summary report of what, I, what I've actually done and you can note the one that I changed from the share over to CX4 underscore 230 LUN2. And then I would simply say OK. And my restore would be completed.
The last option is for Windows Virtual Machines only. But with a Windows Virtual Machine taking, for instance, that same VM that we just did the image restore for, by clicking here, I have the capability now to browse for the files that I want to actually recover. And I can very quickly here choose what I want to restore. On selecting recovery, I can go in place or out of place. By selecting to a different location, I have the capabilities again to choose a virtual machine I want to recover to. It gives me a quick summary of the OS that I'm actually recovering to. And then I can drill down here by selecting Windows File System. This will ask for my user credentials to actually have access to that box. Since again, remember, there are no Avamar agents installed on these boxes. I'll put in my credentials and say log on. And I'll get a browse tree where I can actually start recovering information to inside of this system. And so very easily here I have the capability to actually say recover a file inside that virtual machine. Remember this is not for application consistency. This is only for um, OS consistent or crash consistent copies. For, agent or for application consistency, I'm still going to need an Avmar agent inside that guest. This concludes our demonstration with Avmar 5.0 with the integration into vSphere. Thank you very much and have a great day.